which is going to come up later. Um, but I, I, we got to start with the Cavs, who we keep we keep saying, well, maybe this was the most impressive win. Mm-hmm. Well, may, maybe this was the most impressive win. I still think the Celtics wins, both of them, rank as 1-1A, one and one a, but now we have a 1-B, and that's mm-hmm. what they did last night. They beat Milwaukee 114-106 after losing the two games against the Bucs in Milwaukee. They had a 24-point lead, and I got to tell you guys, I was nervous as hell. I was watching with my son, and I kept telling I, – I said – Early in the fourth quarter, I said it's going to come down to a last-second shot, which it damn near did. Yep. If that three didn't get stuck in the rim in the backboard mm-hmm. and went in, it's a one-possession game. They held on. That's the good news. Donovan Mitchell played great, um, finished with 36 points, four rebounds, six assists. But Giannis, as I'm watching it, I have to give Tyvis credit because I, I know he's an MVP. I get that. But as I was watching Giannis will this team back from a 24-point hole to one, at one point cut it to six – I was thinking about how, how emphatic Tyvis has been that he is. Oh, he's insane. The best yeah. play. He's unstoppable. Yeah. He is what he wants to be. He is unstoppable, both going to the rim and as a facilitator and even shooter. What did we make of last night's game? The Cavs, I'll, I'll, follow, I'll start off on the point you just made about Giannis. They, fo- they focused their entire defense is stopping him. Anytime he got in the lane, there's three and four dudes around and him. I, and he got 45. And he's still getting what he wants. So it, it, it was a really impressive performance from him. I've said it on the show a hundred times. NBA teams that reach that level that the Bucks are at once you're a champion, they play hard for about five minutes. And the Cavs took the punch. Like, they fell behind early, and the Bucks are like, all right, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. But then it, you could almost see it like, okay, let's go. And they threw their best punch, and they almost got them. And I, they had the Cavs reeling. They had them on the ropes, but they held on. And, and as you said, like, I thought it was going to come down to the last minute last second shot and and you just felt like the champs are coming the champs are coming the champs are coming and the kids were like where's the clock where's the I clock know. how much longer do we uh-huh. have to hold they on they even to said this? on the broadcast it feels like the clock is moving backwards yeah. right they now. would have lost that game last year i think in that same situation um, in, in the same thing without without, without I, think, I, I think without so probably Garland I made some really big mistakes i thought he took some bad shots early in the shot clock yeah like around the six minute mark when i'm starting to think okay this is where you want to just drain the shot clock as much as you can. He was jacking up not even good shots early in the clock, had a bad turnover, and I just felt like, oh, no, this is becoming like signature yeah. for this team, blowing these huge leads, but they did hold on. They held on, and it's, you know, it's, I was watching the game last night, and I was thinking back, I think it was the year of the championship. I meant to look this up, and I didn't. I think it was the year that they won the championship. They had a game at Atlanta late in the year, and they got their doors blown off by Atlanta, and everyone was like, oh, my God. God, the Hawks are going to get them. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing that night, listen, guys, this is no big deal because the Cavs didn't defend the way that they would in the playoffs. Right. And and Milwaukee's kind of doing that now. Like, Milwaukee's not guarding the Cavs the way they're going to guard them in May Mm -hmm. if they see this team again. And that's the one thing that's really important to keep in mind. I'll I'll make another point. I was – last week I went to Detroit and spent some time with Mike Brown, the old Cavs coach. He's Mm -hmm. done a fantastic job of turning around the Kings. I'm doing a story on Mike in Sacramento and all that. Probably come out sometime in January. And Mike said, like, listen, like, he's got Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. And he said, these guys last year were, the like, one of the best pick-and-roll combinations in the league. But when you get to the playoffs, teams are going to take that away. Mm -hmm. Teams are going to take away what you do best every single time, especially the later that you go. You have to find better – you have to find alternative ways to score. So he's trying to get these guys to understand, you're going to get your numbers during the regular season playing this way. It's not going to work in April, May, and June. And that's what the Cavs have to start playing for is you can run pick and roll with Darius and Evan. You can run pick and roll with Donovan and and Jarrett. But teams are going to take that. They're going to blitz the ball handler. They're going to get the ball out of his hands. You're going to do all these different things. So how else can you score? What other ways are you going to be able to put the ball in the basket? And that's the next step for the Cavs to figure out. I think the fourth quarter was a preview of that. It was. It was. When things break down or when teams are really coming at you and they're taking away what you do best, what's your secondary? What's your third option? And that's what I think that's the next step in the Cavs' progression is figuring that out. What did you see last night, G? Anything interest you catch your eye? Oh, a whole lot of stuff. Hold on. Let me me wait. Let me wait. Yeah, you process. Y'all hear that? Y'all heard that? MVP. Mm, yeah, MVP. again. Oh boy, again. And yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. But I was also watching Giannis get his. Giannis but is the MVP. Giannis, Giannis is the MVP. Hey, I mean, I, it's not, even, hey, it's not but, even close to me. Hey, Giannis, like you said, he unstoppable. Like, he's if he, he could get to the rack, it's done. 
I, I mean, he, you can put. He has a handle. He's mm -hmm. he is he is the closest thing I've seen to prime LeBron being unstoppable getting to the rim. It just you you can't do anything about Remember it. Remember Shaq at LSU? Just Shaq would put the ball on the floor and go right by everybody, yeah, and, and that's and, what I thought of yesterday. And he could go left, he could go right. But I will say this: in the playoffs, Jason, you are correct. In playoffs, things will slow down. They will take all of your your best options away. So you got to figure out a way. To, to be able to move the ball. Sometimes I watch and see how good the Cavs are doing by their ball movement. Yeah, you can you can do pick and roll in some of those things, but the ball movement is, is what get people open and that that translates to playoff basketball. But I will just say this people get on me all the time. They say, man, you 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 that Kyrie Irving uh, uh, comparison you made yesterday, G Bush, that was out of line. I that almost drove off the road. He I watched like, what you had to say. He, I he almost was, drove look, off the road. Hey, I he, texted Mike. I'm like, G's he, lost his mind. He, he, He's <laughs> lost his mind. I'm telling you, man, that by the end of the season, you're going to have some people come back and be like, you know what, damn it, G Bush, you was kind of right. You tried to tell the people, the good people of Cleveland, that Colin Sexton had better numbers than Kyrie. He, he did. I mean, he averaged 25. I was just giving you the numbers. Oh, well, you got to look at the teams yeah, that they played on at the time. That was tongue It's like when Kevin Love came here from <laughs> Minnesota. Everybody's like, he's a rebounding machine. He's a scoring machine. Right. Well, there was nobody else yeah. there. Yeah. He had to he's gather numbers, and that's what he did. My name is the Duke of Knee Jerk. Mm. Listen, you know <laughs> how I get My down. Knees were jerking Can you get a sweatshirt that <laughs> says that? The Duke of Knee Jerk. When you watch Donovan Mitchell today in the moment, it's, un, it's undeniable. He, 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 he is just on that same level as Kyrie. And, and at the same time, this dude don't care about nobody. Like, mm -hmm. he, he went to the rack on Giannis. Like, well, if you, you get out of here. And when it's crunch time and Darius Garland may move the ball and fumble the ball or he, he still act like he can't bring the ball, Donovan Mitchell say, give me that ball right here. I'm going to show you what to do. And he closed them out. You talk about 30-some points a game. Mike, is G. Bush nuts on this? Oh, yeah. Uh, but but it's a, it's a, it comes from a good place and a real place. I'm excited as he is. I am not. I wouldn't necessarily say Colin Sexton was – I'd rather have him than Kyrie Irving necessarily. Oh. No, that's not it. No. Colin Sexton, no, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. Back. The Colin Sexton was I know. just to prove facetious, a point. Facetious, facetious. If Kyrie no. played Donovan Mitchell one-on-one -on -one today, Kyrie would win. But that doesn't mean I'd rather have Kyrie. I don't know about yes, that, Jason. Would. Yes, he would. He'd I give, don't know that. One of well, these neither of you know that. I don't neither know. of you know that. Remember, when you're one-on-one, -on -one, it's what you do with the ball. That's exactly and it. And Donovan is a great – I mean, he for, it, for what he is, Donovan can handle the ball, but Kyrie might be one of the best to ever Ky do Kyrie it. Kyrie could beat almost – Kyrie might beat everybody in the league one-on-one, -on -one, but that doesn't mean I want him on my right, team. Right, right. Donovan's a better fit for the team. Mm -hmm. Donovan's better – all around game yeah. probably than Kyrie, but Kyrie, when you're a point guard, you have so many responsibilities outside of just scoring the mm -hmm. score, scoring the basketball. You have to, as the point guard, Kyrie struggled with this at times. You have to be aware. Evan Mobley hasn't touched it the last four times down the floor. I got to get my, I got to get my guy the ball. Mm -hmm. right? I got to get him a look. I got to get him a touch. You have to be aware of so much more. It's really hard. There are examples, Chris Paul and Phoenix, but it's it's hard and it's not ideal for your point guard to be your number one option. You don't want it to be your point guard. So the Cavs are better off having to be Donovan rather than a Kyrie or a Darius in this case. And Darius really was that last year. Speaking of Kyrie, the, the Nets are coming. They are. And they're going to be here the day after Christmas. That's a hot ticket. I'm oh, already, we going to see. I've already looked hey, into that. You know, that's the great part about basketball. They get an opportunity to go out there every other night, sometimes back to backs to prove it. Kyrie going to be in the building. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I'm Maybe. telling you. I don't think I think he's played here like once yeah. since he left. Kyrie is in the building. Guess what? You got to see Donovan Mitchell. And, and for all y'all fans out there, thank you very much for going ahead and, and continue to give those MVP chance. We want those things to be louder because the more and more it happens, people's going to start mentioning. You know what? That Donovan Mitchell. You he's know, gonna. He's in the he, conversation. One more reason change. though that like you'd rather have Donovan Mitchell than Kyrie <laughs> is that at no point is the GM of the Cavs going to suddenly get like a phone call in the middle of the night. From Donovan Mitchell saying, I've decided I don't want to play basketball anymore. I'm going to go find Bigfoot. Right. Which is something that Kyrie really might do. He might do that like next week. Facts. And then he just, they just, they're missing their best player again. Yeah. Or, that, you know, yeah. so that's another thing. It's just the mental capacity, I think. And yeah. like, uh, just the he is, a, he is a loose cannon we, and you just don't know what yeah. you're going to get. We saw what the Cavs had to give up to get Donovan, mm -hmm. right? We saw it was a yeah. war chest of picks, Larry Markinen, the whole deal. 
Kyrie has no trade value right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. I was talking to an executive a couple weeks ago. I said, could could they trade him at all? Could anybody want him? Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe the Lakers. Well, didn't in the he? Right deal. He said he wanted traded, and then the Nets well, came out and said. Well, right. Durant asked for the trade. Kyrie opted back into his contract. He's 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 crazy. You never know what he's going to yeah. say. What he's going to say next. So you know, like, we, we say like that a hot kind girl. of like like you know, like flippantly, but. There is something there's there. something there. It's yeah. it's, it's and I don't real. want to make light of it. I don't I, I don't want to make light of it either. But it. when you look at just the personality and some of the things that he has said mm-hmm. in his career and done, he I saw that's when he a was st- here. stick of TNT on your roster. I saw it early in his career when he was here and I was like, man, there's just He's a contrarian. There's just something here, and it's just growing. Even had some issues at Duke left. in his this, in yeah. his one year well, there. Well, well Jay, you know, you just said you said some Pope. Today, um, and this is in, in, in general, in, in our society. Everybody is a contrarian. Everybody, people think that you the smarter you are, it has a correlation to do with how much you disagree with regular facts. It's a facts. brand, yeah, it's a brand. Like, it's just like, okay, well, if you guys are over there, I can stand out by going over here and saying the most obscure, crazy mm-hmm. stuff. It's the hot take era. Yeah. yeah. And then you got money, so the money prevents and shields you from any sort of repercussions. And then at the end of the day, you just look at those people and be like, well, social media, you could put something up. And even if it's the craziest thing anybody has ever heard, yeah. you could get 2,000 likes. Yeah. And that's just... And that's why it I exists. I don't think he... Yeah. He doesn't believe a lot of stuff nah, he's yeah, saying. Yeah. He, likes the, he likes the pushback. He likes uh, make, getting that reaction from people and, and stand, being the person who says... I'm not going to go with everybody else on this. That's that's what it comes yeah. down to with a lot of his. I that think is his stuff, brand, so, which isn't as crazy or anything. One thing, just back to the Cavs, real quick. That about that I, that I love seeing yesterday was some of the adjustments. That uh, I'll be honest, I probably underestimated JB Baker's staff throughout er, early on in his Cavs tenure. And I think I love watching what he's doing. I love watching their rapport with him. I love watching how he is using. Um, I, I like I, I like watching his rotation right now. I like like when Evan Mobley got in a foul trouble early. How he all of a sudden Jared Allen's covering it again, right. whether he wanted to or not, you know. And then what? Kevin Love's helping out on him. They knew that he was going to get 45, but they adjust for their weaknesses by just accept. I won't say they accepted that he's. It's hard to say that like it's hard to say Jared Allen had a great game when the guy he was guarding had 45 points. <laughs> but when your defensive play, when your defensive plan is to you know accepting that he's going to get his, and then just do the best you can of making it hard as possible for him, then Jared Allen did a hell of a job on him last night. He really did. He bodied him up. And he and he he got his points too. Mm-hmm. And as much as your MVP candidate uh, looked good, he also got that on like thirty shots or something. He was he yeah. he, he was he had bad he was he, bad he had bad shooting last he night. He was volume shooting. I was I, I know you like the, the rotation, but there were points that I know he can't play every second. But there were points during the last fifteen minutes of the game, the last three of the third, and then the whole fourth, where Mitchell was out. Obviously, it was it was on the, you know right. in the third quarter. They brought him back in. He hit that glass three right before Milwaukee came yeah. back and answered it. One of the most bizarre four-second finishes yeah. of a quarter you'll see. Yeah. But I kept screaming, get him back yeah, in the game. To, were they trying to save him or something? I think they were trying to keep him fresh for yeah. the end, but I'm watching 24 turn yep. into 12 like Man, this. Boys. Get a timeout and get your star back in the game. Yeah, there was a point in yeah. the fourth quarter where I felt like Peyton Manning going timeout. <laughs> yes, yeah. timeout. Yeah, and they yeah. were not and, calling it. And Darius just went and attacked and... I think he missed and the ball went out and they called it out on Milwaukee and they got it back and I think they scored. But I thought there are moments where I think JB just wants to see how they're going to react yeah. under the stress test. But I'm sitting there going, they didn't react well. Time out, time out. And, and I'll hold judgment. I love JB. Mm-hmm. I think he's an unbelievable human. Like the whole family of bigger staffs is terrific. I know them a little bit. I know his wife a little bit. Uh-huh. I think they're great. Something bad's coming. But no, he's just got to prove it the postseason. Oh, like, yeah. You have to prove it. Like Ty Lue. Is he the right guy for this project? I have no idea. Because he's never yet. had the opportunity. Yeah. Right. Like, look at Ime Odoka. Like, okay, the personal issues aside, first year coach going through it in Boston got him the finals. I know. Like, that's unreal. unheard of. Yeah, it is. And the two teams that I think are better than the Cavs Unless right you're now. David Blatt. Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Don't even. Don't even. <laughs> don't do that. We're going to fight. That was in spite of, not because you of. See how, you see how oh, I played that one? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Udoka added to Boston. Blatt took from Cleveland. Uh-huh. Anyway, so let's see how Joe Mazzulli does now as a first-year coach in Boston. Let's see if he has the same type of success. Rank the top three in the is, – is it Milwaukee, Boston, Cleveland? I think so, in I, that I order. Do too. I think it's Milwaukee, Boston, and Cleveland. And I, th- I think that even though the Cavs won last night, I think there's a clear delineation right now. And the reason I say that is because – the, the game on the Friday after Thanksgiving when the Cavs had a 17-point lead, 
and they gave up a 25 to two run. You yeah. talk about finding that switch. Yep. Where's our playoff switch? Yep. There it is, 25 to two. Yep. We saw that again last night. When when you get to the playoffs, you're not playing five minutes a night at that level. You're playing 35 That's minutes exactly right. at that level. That's exactly and right. I just don't think they're ready. They need, won a shooter. A championship. they need a three point shooter for sure. They do. Milwaukee's won a championship. Boston's made it to the finals. They know how to play. They know how to navigate December, January, February, and March to play for April, May, and June. Cavs still have to figure that out. I have no idea if JB's the guy or not. I know one thing. They had a guy who was the guy, and that was Ty. He was terrific yeah. in the postseason, and he's not here now. So now let's see. I if, don't know if JB if, is or not. I hope he is because I really like him. If he can get his team to play defense hard all the time, I think I think he, he will be the guy because it, it's the most impressive thing about the Cavs is you can see their potential, like not offensively, but defensively. Like when Jared Allen or Mobley are on the perimeter, there's times where, I mean, countless times where they just switch. Mm -hmm. And you would think a big shouldn't be able to yeah. cut off guards. Like right. there's times where they cut them off off the two dribbles and make them, you know, swing the basketball to have two bigs like that and two rim protectors. I mean, they got they got the potential to be lights out. They're already number one in the league right now defensively, right? And that's with certain lapses, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I mean, they got the potential. It's just about whether or not they can do that consistently it, when everybody else gives them that push in the playoffs, because they're gonna give you some different energy. To I have point, a really, I have a really obnoxious question for you, Jason. <laughs> do you think that there is any way that we? I, I, I say this after watching that Utah game. Uh, do you think there is any way that the Cavs could have pulled out that trade without including Markin? No, oh, no way. I wish. No, for the talent and for the money, they needed the contract. So they knew what he work. was then, because he nobody was like pr so pro Markin and last well, year. I mean, Markin had some big shots last I year. I mean, yeah, he did. Mark <laughs> I loved him. I hated seeing him go. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. Well, Markin finally got the Chicago stink off because he was never the player in Chicago he was supposed to be. He had a good year here, and I give the Cavs a lot of credit because they were searching for a wing last year. They were looking for a small forward. There was none to go get. So they just traded for Markin and, and turned him into one. Yeah. And if you really want to dial it back, the contract that they signed Larry Nance to set this deal up because he made all his money up front and then the contract got lower, which made him more appealing. So mm. they do the deal, they get Markin, and they probably overpay Markin in a little bit based on the production that he had in Chicago. But he's lived up to the contract, certainly. He had a great year here last year. I, I, he had a good year. He made some big shots. He had some good games. Mm -hmm. I did not look at Lowry Markinen as a cornerstone <coughs> of this franchise at yeah. any point. And I, he's having a wonderful year in but Utah. But now he could be a big piece. He could be. I still would rather have Donovan. Of course. So, yeah, I, that wasn't the question. So No, we're getting that, greedy. We're saying not. Donovan the question and is, Lowry. Some, like, like, what could be? What it hey, could guys, be. guys, have you met Isaac Okoro, Utah? Would you, would <laughs> you <laughs> like I, to take a dance with him? I think the interchangeable piece in that was probably Abaji. Yeah. Because he was a rookie and had... Yep. But in terms of Markinen and Colin, I think those were both pillars that had to be part of the I haven't paid deal. much attention to Abaji. How is he? He's not hardly playing. No. Really? He's, yeah. He's a rookie. I mean, he was a four-year guy at Kansas. So right. that tells you right there. Yeah, I know. If you play four years, are you there's, really ready for the There's NBA a reason anymore? why. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's you're a reason right. you had to you're stay right. in In this time, time yeah. if you're there three, yeah. there, there's questions. I, I, if you're there four, what are you yeah, doing? Uh -huh. I, you know, are your parents professors and you're making you stay? Because you, I will say this, man. Isaac and Coral, you can stay on the court if you go hit them corner threes, though. I know. You're in a nice little game yesterday. A decent game. You know, you know, Jason, I, I think they talk about his defensive efficiency. Like, he's been really hot over the last eight to ten games playing defense well. I don't know how long that can last. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're going to go all defense and, you know, he's a guy, you, do you like the lineup better? Because I know they have Stevens in there and they, they put D Wade. D -Wade you got to change it. trying everything. Yeah, they tried everything there. So, w w w what are your thoughts o on I that? don't think – I mean, Okoro's fine in the regular season. <laughs> I, Okoro's not going to be part of this rotation in the playoffs. You, you can't have that big of a liability offensively in a postseason series for exactly what we've just been talking about, the way they're going to scheme you differently. Like, teams ignore him now. Well, mm -hmm. you can if you're getting enough at the other side, though, Yeah, but you, I, don't, I mean, I, Golden I, State I – you can, but I think that they have enough defensively that they don't need him at oh, the other okay. side. Oh, okay. All right. They have between, other guys that can do what you need Mo in the playoffs. Between Mobley and Allen, you know, I think they can get enough defensively. I don't know that you need a defensive specialist on the wing in the postseason series. And maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong. I, yeah. I'd love to Before be we leave the Cavs, um, I asked you, is it is it Milwaukee, Boston, Cleveland? Right now, the, Milwaukee is a full game ahead of the Cavs who are in the three. They're a half game ahead of the Celtics who are in the two. 
all three of those teams would have the best record in the West. The Cavs would have the best record in the West by a couple of games. Hmm. Um, is that the pecking order for you right now, Milwaukee, Boston, Cleveland? Man, I don't want to see Brooklyn first round, I tell you that. They scare me they, too, man. I, that's something I want to see. They're figuring it out. Yeah. And, and last again, night, I think they were up by like 35 points at one point. It is the age and the volatility of that team that gives me hope. That would, that gives me they hope could that implode at any moment. They could implode yeah. any time. And so hopefully, that, that's what... You're rooting for that 3 a.m. phone yes. call where he's going to look for big. Foot. If you count for the, if you count on the count the volatility into it, purely basketball, I'd say that the Cavs are still below those guys. I, get, I think just right now, but um, vo- but if you take into the into account the volatility and the Kyrie factor, then I could I, I put them. Is that yeah. how you see it? I, I, Milwaukee, Boston, Cleveland, Cats. I, I, I think right now the record says they're a little better than what they are. I like all the pieces of the parts. Obviously, I'm drinking a Donovan Mitchell Kool Aid, but. You look at the East, if you said they got the Miami Heat, could they lose? Sure, they could. If they got the Brooklyn Nets in the round, sure, they could lose that. Mm-hmm. If they got the 76ers, they could lose that. It's Miami. very close. It, yeah. The it's Hawks. Sacks, yes. and it is close. Yes. It's, it's, it's close. So, yeah. I, I don't think now they're in the top three, but it's a work in progress. I think they can okay. be there at the, by their record. And by the way, they play if they continue through the like the long haul. That yeah. game in a couple of days is like a Christmas present to, to all of us. Oh, mm-hmm. fine. It's, it's, fine. I, I wish I almost wish it was a Christmas Day game. That'd be a fun day yeah. to, because everybody's just sitting around watching TV. But it gives you something to look forward to the next day because that is going to be. There's a lot of interest in that game. I, I, I was like, why are we on Christmas? I'm we, glad it's not Christmas we, Day. We, we, no, my my family's it. fighting in the garage. And I don't get to watch the game <laughs> next year. The Cavs will be on Christmas. Okay, they had to wait. I think so. Yeah, and they. I don't think. The le- I think everybody's surprised how early this thing's come together. Yeah, they're, they're one yeah. game behind the best record in the NBA. But, I mean, they were cooking teams last year. They we were, were two freaked or three out last year. Were, before but the, but at the end year of the was year, the crazy one. But it, it they were trending it, down. It didn't feel sustainable last year, and then they had the injuries, and it wasn't sustainable. Right. This is sustainable. Sure. And real quick before we pivot, I know we got Maurice. You mentioned the West, and I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday. I can't remember a time in the NBA when so many small market teams had this many big stars. You look at Donovan in Cleveland, John Morant in Memphis, Jokic, who we haven't even talked about. Wow. Oh, I know. MVP could be a three-time MVP. Just ignore him. Giannis. Giannis in Milwaukee. I can't remember a time when so many superstars were in small markets across the NBA. They, and you, I'm just really curious. They, I mean, we could spend a whole second. And not all of them were on first contracts. You can understand how it might happen on their first contracts. Yeah. Uh, but well, a lot of times they sign the second and then they force their way out two true. years later the second. Yeah. Two of them. Or, or that you just named, I believe, are not American. And I wonder how much it, what we value comes into play with that. That's because interesting. Because they don't chase, they might not be as necessarily interested in chasing money. Blinded or by the lights of LA. Or yeah. the lights of LA or yeah. New York. Like there might be more comfortable in a place that's a little more quiet. That's absolutely European, true. You know? Giannis yeah, I, has said that yeah, in Milwaukee yeah. and obviously Jokic and Denver. It's just, that's what you have to depend on if you're like a franchise is you just got to like hope that they had like a ho- like a rough upbringing in Greece where they were mistreated as an immigrant. <laughs> and then they're just like, I appreciate everything about and Milwaukee. And Memphis looks like <laughs> Milwaukee's America. amazing. Right. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and and I, I've never got it. When you filthy rich like that, bro, you, you, you getting 200 million, 150. Bro, you live anywhere. Yeah, I can yeah. I can still live in Lakewood, right? I just yeah, yeah. If I got enough money. I'll just build a tower. <laughs> build me a tower right in the yeah. middle of Lakewood. Yeah, I'm here. Uh-huh. I got it. Can you build a studio in said tower so we can do the show from there? Oh uh, yeah, like I, and that's another thing. Why all y'all cats will be going to other studios? Just put it in your basement. There that's you a go. Co- you guys are tripping. 